Um, we're going to go through an interesting application that you see a lot of, in a lot of different uh, free calculus or calculus books um, on ellipse and the elliptical patterns um, and where they're used. And this is a the old fireplace arch problem. Um, sometimes you see um, elliptical bridges and whatnot, and they have the same basic concept. Um, this is a little bit more involved, but we'll try to go through it, and hopefully this will make sense to you. The first is, uh, let's read the problem. It says, a fireplace arch is to be constructed in the shape of a semi-ellipse. Semi okay, so we're only using half ellipse. And you can see an example of what this would be. We're going to be taking a fireplace right here, and we're using this part, and we're talking about this part right here. So this is the arch we're referring to. Okay, the opening is to have a height of two feet. All right, so we're going to go two feet up. All right, so two feet. Um, from at the center and a width of six feet along the base. So from here to here, we go six feet. Okay, six feet. Um, the contractor wants to draw the ellipse on the wall. Where should the tax um, or fol foci be placed? All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to use um, the trick of identifying the foci. Um, and we're going to do the first question first. Where do the foci have to be placed? So we're looking for where do these foci have to be right along the major axis? And this obviously is going to be the major axis. You can see it there, but also it's going to be larger. So um, to help us figure this out, um, we want to figure out where the foci are. We're going to assume, um, if I were to graph this, that this is going to be on a coordinate grid, if we were to put this on a coordinate grid, that this would be at the center 0, 0. Okay, so it's going to be the center 0, 0. So, um, to do that, we want to figure out from the zero, 0, all right, from this point right here, right in the middle, where do our foci have to be? Well, to do that, foci, all right, are C units, C units from center, from center, okay, on the major axis, on the major axis. Okay, so with this information, um, we can identify this by finding C. Well, I guess we need to know what A is, all right, and what B is, because we're going to use this formula, C squared equals A squared minus B squared. Okay? Um, so, um, to do that, we're going to find out what A and B are. And we can do that by looking at our dual drawing. Um, this is the minor axis, because the 2 is less than this. And from here to here, this would be our A value. Since the whole thing is 6, our A value would have to be 2. Okay, so A is a okay, 2, 3. So from here to here, the whole thing is 6. This right here is going to equal 3. B is going to equal 2. So when we go over here, we're going to have A squared, which would be 9, minus 4 equals C squared. So C squared is going to equal 5, and C would equal the square root of 5. So roughly the square root of 5 units all right, from the center. So we're going to go over here. And we would go, um, so where would that be? Along right here, our point would be over here, one, the positive square root of five, zero, and then our other one would be negative square root of five, zero, and wherever that center would be. Okay, that's where we have to be placed. Okay. Um, and the square root of 5 is roughly about 2 point something, um, um, 2.236 centimeters or somewhere around there, okay? Or whatever units we have, feet. Okay, so feet away from there. Okay, now that, was, that wasn't too bad. Now, the next thing is a little bit more involved because now we're going to get into um, the actual definition of this. Also, how long should the string be constructed um, to sketch this, all right, to construct this sketch? Because what we're going to do is going to place this, and we're going to use a little string and try to draw an outline. Okay, we're going to draw an outline of this. So to do that, we want to know that we're going to have um, distance one to distance two is going to be the same. So we know that from any point here to here, all right, d1 plus d2 will be the same anywhere on this value. So we just need to add up d1 plus d2. Well, to do that, um, we're going to actually cut, create a little triangle. We're going to actually move these. So if we had two units, that's going to 
like that right there a lot of the time. All right. So to do that, we're going to kind of draw this out. From here to here, we realize that's going to be the square root of 5. All right, square root of 5, and this is going to be 2. So we want to figure out this distance, this distance, and we can multiply that by 2. So how does this string have to be? Well, let's find d1. d1 equals, since right here is again, this right there, from here, the foci to the center is a square root of 5. Okay, so we'll have the square root of 5 squared using the Pythagorean theorem. And then we have this distance, which is going to be 2 plus 2 squared. And so we know we're going to take the square root of that. So we have 5 plus 4, which would be square root of that, would equal um, square root of 9. So distance 1 is equal to 3. Okay, so this distance is 3. Well, this one is going to be the same thing, because I put it at the exact point right up there. So we're just going to take that times 2. So d2 is also going to equal 3. And so 3 plus 3 is going to be, well, that should be 6, 6 feet. And everything is in feet. So he has to get a string that is 6 feet long, right, in order to figure this out. Okay. Well, here is a practical application of using ellipses and finding the um, foci, all right, given the very different constraints. And also we found out how much string we have to use if we actually wanted to create a sketch of that arch, the elliptical arch. Well, if this helps out, um, and you doing some of your other problems.